It's not easy to make a prediction about the future of computers that will be true for the next half century. But 50 years ago, in 1965, the co-founder of Intel, Gordon Moore, made a prediction that holds true today. He noticed that every year since the computer chip was invented, those chips were becoming twice as complex. His theory was that this would continue, and it has. About every two years, man has been able to make computer chips faster, cheaper, and smaller. I'm Bridget Carey, and on this CNET Inside Scoop, I'm joined by colleague Ben Rubin, who has been reporting on this theory known as Moore's Law. Now, it's 50 years later since this theory came about, so what's the significance now, looking back? The concept of Moore's Law first started as an observation, and now it's basically turned into a fact. It's turned into a timeline that all chip manufacturers, software developers, device makers follow along and expect. And for chip manufacturers especially, if you kind of fall behind this two-year timeline that was uh, first observed 50 years ago, um, you could become irrelevant. Uh, all your factories, all your scientists, all your research could all of a sudden just go up poof, nobody really cares about your chips anymore because you're just not moving fast enough. Um, for consumers, Moore's Law has meant that basically the internet, smartphones, all the different types of technology that we see today wouldn't really be possible without uh, the complexity of these chips growing as quickly as it has. In your research, what surprised you? The thing um, that I would say, first of all, that surprised me and that I spent a lot of time learning about was just how small the different parts of a chip are today. The first transistor, which is the most important part of a chip, was built by hand. And these days, they can make them with machines that produce them to be smaller than a virus. Transistors today, you could fit more than 100 million of them on a pinhead, which is just kind of like, you know, mind-blowing to think about. If you it's can hard really, to imagine. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And and they don't just make one transistor, they make more than a billion of them to fit on any chip. And um, then they make billions and billions of chips a year. So um, just to consider the precision necessary to do this type of work, it, it's really pretty incredible. I went out to Oregon and uh, saw Intel's research facilities mm -hmm. over there and to really get like a full perspective of just how much work and effort uh, is needed to do this kind of work. I took a helicopter ride uh, to see the 300 acre facility, one of their newest facilities. They started in the 90s and it's just absolutely enormous uh, in this effort to try to develop and manufacture chips. Is there a point we're reaching where people are thinking that we're not going to be able to make transistors any smaller, we can't keep making chips, you know, twice as good every two years? Yeah, I mean, ever since Moore's Law uh, was, was first coined or considered, there's always been predictions that it's going to end at some point. And uh, it, it probably in some way, it probably will end. Um, there's just, you know, physics dictates that you just can't keep making this stuff smaller and smaller. It's going to happen. I, I don't think that, from, from my research, it seems that the, in the immediate future, that's probably not going to be the case. Like, we're not in danger of this happening anytime soon. Mm -hmm. And um, even then, uh, scientists plan to kind of pivot where they're going to find a way to make chips faster and cheaper, but maybe not um, through the same way that they've been doing by making transistors smaller. Well, thanks, Ben, for joining us on this CNET Inside Scoop. And you can catch his full story on CNET.com. I'm Bridget Carey. Thanks for watching.